みなさんこんにちは。早稲田大学教育学部英語英文学科のバックハウスと申します。今日は、えー、学科紹介の一環として私が担当している Language, Culture and Cognition という科目について紹介したいと思います。どうぞよろしくお願いします。なお、この授業は使用言語は英語になりますので、えー、これからは英語に切り替わります。So, the name of the class is Language, Culture and Cognition. And one of the things we will be looking into is the possible relationship between language and particularly our first language and how we see the world. For example, let's have a look at this one time YouTube hit song, What Does the Fox Say? On the left, you can see the original lyrics, which are full of animal sounds. So the dog goes woof, the cat goes meow, the bird goes tweet, the mouse goes squeak, and so on. On the right, uh, you can see a Japanese translation of this. And you can also see that it has, well, very different animal sounds. So one one for the dog. Nya nya for the cat.、Um, or, I mean, just compare、um, the English bird's tweet、uh, to the Japanese bird going pio pio. Now, does that mean that perhaps Japanese people hear animal sounds differently than people in English speaking countries? This is one of many questions related to the theory of linguistic relativity, which holds that the structure of a given language affects the way its speakers see the world. This is also commonly known as、uh, the Sapir Whorf hypothesis, named after the two American scholars who first suggested. Let's look at another more urban example. As you may recognize, this is a bilingual Japanese English announcement in a Tokyo subway station. If we take a closer look at the English version first, we can see that it uses future tense. Train will arrive soon. Because the English language makes a basic distinction. Between things happening right now in the present and things to be happening soon, that means in the future. By contrast, the Japanese version is in present tense, densha ga kimas, because the Japanese language does not make that distinction. Now, does that mean that Japanese and English speakers have different conceptions of time? Certainly not, I hope, but as we will see in this class, the idea of linguistic relativity is very much alive and kicking, and indeed does have a few exciting, controversial new insights on offer. Another question that we are dealing with in this class is the difficulty of language. In general, and also the difficulty of the Japanese language. As you know, Japanese has this image of being a tremendously difficult language. But is that really so? Well, first off, we need to make a basic distinction, as you can see here, between relative difficulty and absolute difficulty. Relative difficulty means that the difficulty of a given language largely depends on your first language. For example, there is no doubt that Japanese is much easier to learn for a native speaker of Korean, whose language is very similar to Japanese, than, say, for a native speaker of English. 
which is very different. Likewise, it is much easier for a native speaker of German, like me, to learn English than for a native speaker of Japanese, because English is much closer to German than to Japanese. From a Japanese perspective, uh, one could even say that German and English are basically dialects of each other. But then there's also an absolute difficulty to any given language. And here we must distinguish between the different linguistic levels because each level has a different degree of difficulty. In the case of Japanese, there is absolutely no doubt that the writing system and also its intricate politeness language, keigo, is difficult, very difficult to be sure. On the other hand, in comparison with other languages, we can say that things like pronunciation and also grammar are relatively simple. Take grammar, for instance. Here is a, a comparison of a simple textbook sentence, zō wa hana ga nagai, with the same sentence in German. Elefanten haben einen langen Rüssel. Now, as you can see here, if we know the vocabulary, we need only three basic rules to put the Japanese sentence together. On the other hand, we need more than a dozen rules to arrive at a grammatically correct German sentence. So there's clearly more work to be done here particularly for the non-native speaker. These are two of many topics we are dealing in this, with in this class, and here is an overview for you. Each class consists of a lecture part interspersed with two or three group work sessions uh, in which a given problem is discussed. This creates a lively atmosphere and will also hopefully give us fruitful interaction between the students and also between the students and me. I'm looking forward to seeing you in this class. Thank you. <laughs>